Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see me. Um, Birdman and Friends. Now, a lot of people kept thinking you was promoting it. They, they kept saying the hot boys to the hot boys, Essence and all that. That's what they was thinking. But Essence never promoted like that. Essence was always saying Birdman and Friends. You know, um, why was it so important to have people like that on the stage, you know, with BG and Juvie and Fresh and everybody, and Wayne, and even um, when you had the locks, you had um, like Jadakiss on there. Yeah, Scarface, Two Chains, to name a few. Like, why those people were so important for you to have them with Birdman and Friends on the stage? Um, Bun B, like a day one, mm -hmm. they was fucking with us before we was anybody. The locks, them niggas, like day ones. I got number love and respect for them and Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. You know, Chain, he family. Um, and everybody that was a part of that show, you know, that's family, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I see nigga was talking about like. Um, Wayne ain't won't do this and do that. Wayne wasn't gonna even do essence. Mm -hmm. I called my son and asked him to do it because I was doing Birdman's and Friends, mm -hmm. and he 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 did it because I asked him. Mm -hmm. I asked him to do it right, right. So we always knew that Wayne was gonna have a, his own set mm -hmm. because me and Juve and Jeezy and Fresh. We rehearsed together every day, and we had our own set together. But we all knew that Wayne was going to have his own set because Wayne was supposed to be, a, he was only a surprise guest because mm. he he had did Essence two years in a row, and he turned them down personally. Right. And I asked him, would he do it for me? And he did it for me. Um, that's why he, he had a set because he was like a surprise guest. But right. shout out to my son, Weezy, man. For right, and it's crazy because, like I said, Wayne was just with you the week before in L.A. We all got honest for people to act like Wayne didn't want to be there. Because the reason I'm saying it, because, you know, at the end of the show, when you was like, I'll never be a pussy nigga in my city, something like that, at the end, everybody kept thinking you was insinuating that you was coming at Wayne. When nah, I saw you, you were in the seat, the backstage. Bro, I ain't got the heart to say nothing negative about Wayne. I love my son, man. I, I ain't got the heart to say nothing about none of them. But, nah, that, that wasn't that was about. Um... What I meant by that is, um, I ain't gonna let this game play me. Mm. The game that played a lot of niggas. I ain't gonna never be a pussy ass nigga to this industry and let them play me. Mm. I, mean, I ain't built like that. And I ain't gonna let my city down being a pussy ass nigga getting played. I really did it. Mm. I generated $3 billion over a quarter trillion mm -hmm. strings. Yeah. Now I'm standing on what I'm standing on. Wow. Hey, man, check it, man. It's your boy, man. ECO, man. This year was phenomenal, bro. I had to get up this morning. You know, I had to get to it. I said, hey, man, let me check this out, bro. And and I ain't gonna lie. I gotta give it up to GD because he did send it to me because I do be so busy. But GD put me on like, man, we just did one. I'm like, what? Man, so I, when I started looking at it, man, to see Birdman speak out about what we all thought. And that's what I'm saying. He didn't leave us in limbo. He told us pretty much what it was on his end. A lot of people was insinuating that he was upset with Lil Wayne when when they you know pretty much came out of essence. But evident this was not the thing. You know, everybody wanted to be a hot boy reunion. It ended up being a thing where the Birdman was saying it was Birdman's and friends anyway. So at the end of the day, I think we're anticipating the hot boy reunion so much that we start just making things up to be what we want them to be. So at any rate, I'm just glad that Birdman came on, showed love, cleared the whole air, man, but showed some, you know, some clarity of what was going on. He, he tells us, he details the fact that they all practiced together. Uh, they rehearsed together early on. Uh, him, Manny Fresh, uh, Juvie, Jizzle, they all was already uh, understanding what their sets was going to be. So you got to understand that it's a lot going into these shows before you know they happen sound checks all kind of stuff guys so we already you know i seen it i was there i rocked out with them man i loved it bro that's why when i did my review early on when i first came back from new orleans i was letting y'all know man it's all love bro because when i was around bird man and we were kicking it and i we was over there on on the street when they named it after him it was all love and it's still and i know how bird man is man it's a it's a love thing down there and and for what they billing in the, in the New Orleans areas, from Texas to Louisiana, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. 
Uh, Y'all know how I rock when it come down to these guys, man. But let's think about it for a second. He brought out Bum B. He brought out 2 Chain. He tell you, Bum B, I, I know Bum B is a foundational bill with them. So it's always going to be respect and love. I called Bum when I was down there. Told him how proud I was to see him step out on that stage, man. It wasn't nothing like seeing them all together for me. Yeah, of course, I'm a UGK fanatic, but at the end of the day, everybody know they was the first. And then Cash Money, these were phases. And then, you know, Master P, Cash Money, uh, Master P and uh, Bun, them all kind of came in. Then look at Bun. He pretty much, him and Pimp C, they ushering in the fact of respect and Birdman and when they lock in together. And to be honest with you, man, it's crazy, but he brought everybody out the locks. He brought out, man, I enjoyed that show, Jada Kids. I'm a big Jada fan, so that was easy for me, man. But just seeing those guys come out like they did, man, seeing Scarface rock that mic, it was crazy, bro. And at the end of the day, man, I just love the fact that he came in and showed love and cleared this thing up for us all. GD, man, appreciate you. Hey, you, you guys can look at uh, the full interview, get in the description, and, and, and just pretty much get into the description. You'll see the link. My boy G, the whole interview, the whole live. It was stupid last night. We had a good time. I, I, I even I enjoyed it. Anytime he does, I'm like, I'm there. So, man, I love the fact of how these boys get down. But let's check out this next portion of it where he talks about the being country. Cause I'm a country nigga with a country swing, man. So let's talk about this. There's some Wayne said that um, a lot of people be saying New Orleans country, who country, and people out in South country, you know. How you feel about that or whatever? Because a lot of people in the South historically got called country. Being from New Orleans, would you consider yourself country? Or Man, you not country? Cause New Orleans I'm country as a motherfucker. I'm super, super country. And I, I'm, I'm not just country. I enjoy being country, nigga. But I'm a country hustler. Do the math on me, nigga. I'm the real deal. And I don't mind a nigga calling me country because I think we is country. To compare to them niggas, that. I right. call me country, but that don't mean I can't get much, 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 or much more than these niggas. I think I am country as a motherfucker, and I'm proud of being country, nigga. I don't discredit being a country nigga. Nigga, we country, and what? Fuck you. Yeah, I'm a country nigga with a bunch of bitches and a bunch of money. Mm. I'm, cool. Mm. I'm cool with that. I'm with that. Mm. Bunch of jury, bunch of calls, and I'm there. Mm. Put me, taught me a bunch of everything, nigga. I ain't tripping. I ain't said I love it. none of that blood. I'm country forever. I'm I'm good with being country. I'm a southern nigga. I'm totally good with it. I like that because I remember Pimp C, you and Pimp got that pride for the South. And I know you always called the South down bottom. Why you where that come from and what made you start man, saying down bottom? Everybody I get that from Pimp you know, I love Pimp C and Bun B. We down bottom. We is down bottom if you really look at the map. We down bottom. That's a fact. And I'm good with that. And we good with that. We ain't end up, man. Bro, I ain't beefing with no coke. I love the East and the West. I ain't beefing with nothing in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, we down bottom with this shit. And we winning. So I don't understand what the, what the hate about. Or what man, and we winning is what he said at the end. I, I, I'm just telling you, man, listen, this country thing ain't nothing wrong with us being country. That's what we all, that's why I come, my boy, uh, Pimp C said country rap tunes. We know what we are. Now, the whole game is to make sure you guys are educated on who we are. When you see us, and there's some people that really rock out with us. Shout out to AD. Shout out to a bunch of these dudes that fly in, come rock with us, and understand our culture. It's a lot of people that don't understand it because they don't hit the streets when they're down here. You got, to, hey, you got to hit the streets, and you got to see what we're doing. And you got to see these cars swinging and banging. You got to see these cars riding, nigga riding in air conditioning. You can see the glass houses. You can see us, nigga. We know a lot of times we might not even tent. Sometimes we do tent. We don't know, but we have, we've been doing this for a long time. Getting a lot of money, hustling, getting money like this big. I'm talking about getting big money. We always, you know, the new cars. Man, Birdman, man, this dude, man, they've been doing this since they were kids. I know because I've been doing this since I was a kid. Hustling is a thing that we do down here. And at the end of the day, you would call us country, but we'd be running around here smelling good with bun number nine, with Ismiaki, all kind it, with that Ismiaki that we were talking about. We did that early on. Uh, also, all the cologne, you know. Anything that you, when it comes to smelling good, 
Uh, I mean, spraying it in your car, that Creed Aventus, spraying that, that air freshener, that cherry air freshener in the car. I remember you, you get inside one of my whips, you, gonna, you, you, you start acting like, man, can I touch something? That's how clean it would be. So when I seen pretty much how Cash Money embodied that, embraced that and showed that to the people, I was like, yeah. That's what we do, because you got to understand when, when UGK and Master P and them, when they came with it, they were telling you about their hustle. They were coming in early on that hustle. Birdman came in and them boys started talking about this money and showing you how we get down down here with the way we spending this money. We getting this money. So pretty much P and uh, pretty much uh, uh, Pimp C now, they were showing you how we was getting this money and Birdman will show you how we was spending this money. Uh, Jay Prince and them definitely were doing their thing as well when it come down to the rhymes and just ushering in hip hop movement. Country rap tunes came and it was a rap. You see how it, how it happened, but at the end of the day, I love the way Birdman and them pretty much express what happened. And he's showing you pretty much culture. That's what they're doing. So when you see GD, when you see Birdman, when you see Boss Talk, when you look at all these people, Carlos Miller, Mississippi, stand up, uh, but down in Atlanta, you know, the one thing you got to understand how this country thing is, that's why you want to get next to it, because we just giving you our culture, man. And at the end of the day, man, I love the way that he expressed the fact of how he give it up to the pimp for, for even, you know, embracing it as well. So we all, we going to respect each other. We all peers. I was older than them niggas, uh, than, than Pimp C and Bun B, but I respected them because of what they was talking about, because I was doing what they was talking about. So a lot of love to those guys and cash money to see them embody it man and show us how how to spend that money you know how we was getting that bread you know we had so much of it I right. shout out to bird man man this dude there's something else but also he, he opened up and talked about the the fact of what you know uh pretty much kind of what was going on when some people was talking about some fake jury and fake this and fake that you got to understand man when you start saying this stuff you got to stand on it because People is, hey, man, it's some serious business, man. I lost my parents at a real He lost his parents at a early age. Listen to this. I was 14 years old wearing two Rolexes mm -hmm. uptown in the mm -hmm. 15 years old with 10 cars, three, four motorbikes in the Noya. By the time I was 16 years old, I had 16 cars playing with a few M's in the Melf Noya just moving around uptown, right? Mm -hmm. I ain't never been no man in my life. The well, fake jury, blood. Mm -hmm. That ain't my, my style. And if you uptown in New Orleans mm -hmm. and you fake, a nigga gonna run through you. You guaranteed to get smashed if you uptown and anything fake about you, bro. I ain't never been fake in no kind of way. I ain't never wore no fake jury, nigga cap talking, nigga bitch made. To say I will fake Jerry. Nigga mm. pussy to say I will fake Jerry. I ain't never will no fake Jerry. Nigga, I'm from uptown New Orleans. Nigga, I was 15, 16 years old playing with M's by the time I was 20, 21. Nigga, I had 30 million dollars. But that just showed me a nigga don't know me, nigga. You met me. Mm. Wow. Man, listen, man. We already know what this here is talking about. Birdman just, you were pretty much clearing up the fact we ain't wearing no fake jewelry down here. Rolexes, gold chains, everything we got, it be on point. That's all he's showing. And, and he was having money early, so he didn't have to wear that. I just expressed to you how the cars was. You, what you look like getting into a car that's costing crazy money with fake jewelry on. That don't even make sense. So when you look at him and you see how he came with it and showed y'all what he was doing, the cars wasn't fake. The helicopters wasn't fake. The stuff they was doing wasn't, wasn't fake. These was the cars that was in for the moment. Go back and watch the videos. Them boys wasn't doing nothing, no fake. And to be honest with you, when you think about it, look at, uh, man, hey, Turk was young. So I don't know. I know that's kind of what, because he went on Dream Champs, and I was disappointed about that because it's like you showing the culture in a way to where you shouldn't be showing it. Because BG even talked about it in that video, like you showing some dudes some stuff that that ain't even real, and you young at the time, so you're not even understanding, you know, what's what it's taking to get this stuff. So I got it, I forgive for that, but I get it, and I understand why Birdman feel the way he didn't had to open up and express. Uh, you know, hey, man, let me get the truth out here. This ain't what we was doing because I wasn't doing it. 
We would go in and get our clothes. We was, everything had to be new. We wouldn't wear the same thing twice. Jewelry had to be on point. Any jewelry wore authentic, everything, because you had bread to do that. So at the end of the day, when you look at his legacy, he don't want his legacy taunted by somebody saying something that's not real or that's false. So I get it, man. But one thing you can rest assured, man, he cleared it up on this interview. You got to get in the descriptions and check it out. But the boy was cold, man, at the end of the day with the way they laid this out. Shout out to GD for doing this live. Shout out to GD for doing this interview. I appreciate you, boy. But at the end of the day, the day got to end. But I got to say it before I go, man. We country down here. We definitely get money down here. And we definitely respect every coast. But we are true to who we are. So when it come down to, I, I know y'all got kind of upset when I said Pimp C was a, a, a better, you know, uh, when I said Pimp C was a, a, a better rapper, uh, the culture, the way he embraced it. And, and somebody asked me about the New York cats over a Scarface. But my thing was this, truly, man, and I had to say this, man, hey, I'm looking at the way he embraced culture. And he did. He died, man. He died embracing culture. So I'm always speak up for that in that in that in that respect. And I'm always keep his name alive, man. Just like Birdman and them just did in this interview, this live GD and them. I appreciate y'all. Cause we gotta keep mentioning the pimp, man. Uh, R.I.P. the pimp. Uh, my boy Bun holding it down still, and it's going down. But definitely, man, Birdman, appreciate you guys for really, really clearing up a lot, man. Hey, I enjoyed, man, that Birdman and friends. To be honest with you, man. Man, get, hey, man, make sure you guys like, subscribe, man. Make sure you guys get in the comments. Let me know what you think about this interview that these guys done. And 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 just and let and let me know. You know, uh, do you think what Birdman is saying is, is? Do you agree with it, or do you feel like anything was covered? Because I, I agree with him. But at the end of the day, I know y'all gonna have a lot to say. Cause my comments be going crazy when this stuff come out. So listen, man. Make sure you guys like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys ride with what we ride with. Boss Talk 101, we love all the people that subscribe and rock with us, man. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see me.